No, so there's three different kinds of Mulan. We have the original ballad of mm-hmm. Mulan. We have the animated Disney version of Mulan. And then we have the 2020 live action Mulan. Yeah. And so we have read and watched all three mm-hmm. and figured that we would break it down for you, tell the differences, and tell what we liked and didn't like. Yeah, so of course there's countless versions of Mulan, but we are focusing on the two Disney versions, and of course we went and read the uh, the translated version that Disney originally used. So that's the three versions that we are basing this episode off on. Okay, so let's show them. Let's show them what we've got. Okay, here we go, guys. Okay, um, I want to. I feel like the chat is really light against that background. Give me one second, guys. I'm gonna just make a quick little adjustment here. Changing things up. Yeah, it just it's too light. It's too light. You're right, Kendra. I do travel so much. <laughs> that was part of it. You're like, yeah, they're, they're not going to suspect anything. It's always aware in the world is Landon. It's true. It's true. Okay. All right, guys. Let me just send a message. It erased all the messages. Oh, no. That's still not right. I'm going to make it lighter. I should have tested this better beforehand, but I didn't. You like to fly. Sorry, the everybody. Let's just make it totally white. There we go. That should look good. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Cool. All right, guys. So, um, so Mulan, the story of a woman who went to war. So, like we do every t- thing, uh, Kendra, or uh, Karen, what is your favorite thing? Oh my gosh! Thank you so much. Died for and that. came back, back a cowboy. cowboy call, call it, it reincarnation. reincarnation. Oh gosh, reincarnation! I love that. Um, thank you so much for the subscription, Irony. Five months, holy crap, on a four-month streak. Um, I love you so much. Thank you. And I think you. that one was a look, Levi. Okay, open. We can just leave it cracked. Welcome. Rock snacks. We have Yay. snacks. Some oh bacon pimento. <gasps> okay. Ooh. And some habanero. Okay. Ooh. All right. All right, guys. So, um, of course, uh, since Landon is here, we, we're cooking up a lot of fun stuff. So, um, Levi's brought us some snacks. Yeah, We've got some stream... different pimento cheeses. Yes, the stream is uh, brought to you by Levi and his cooking. Yes, <laughs> very much so. Very much. Okay, so I'll do my favorite thing, and then um, and then I'll try this pimento. Okay, welcome in, welcome in. For those Yay! of you guys that missed the first few minutes of the stream, Landon's actually here, you guys. Oh my God, she's a real person in three D. We have a height difference. I know we've been talking about this, but <laughs> yeah. So Landon is actually sitting just slightly behind me because the camera angle looks really weird otherwise. <laughs> yeah, it's like cutting me off to my nose. It was great. Yeah, it was fabulous. <laughs> All right. So my favorite thing is, of course, in the animated version of Mulan. Um, when they show the make a man out of you, the montage where they are all doing their um, their their stuff to get become better warriors, right? Um, and uh, this really shows her character, and it shows like the way that they took the ballad of Mulan and like individualized it so that a Western audience could understand. So I think it's just like the perfect encapsulation of this movie and how she uses her intelligence. So she takes the the weights and she's able to pull herself up to the top of the post that way. So she doesn't use the brawn. She she uses um, she uses her smarts and uh, and it's just like the perfect ending to that montage sequence. And of course it comes right after the most banging song in the whole movie. Uh, so that is my favorite thing. That's one of my favorite moments yeah, in the movie. It's a really fucking good song. Yeah, it's, it's so a good. Really, really good song. <laughs> it's so good. Um, and and the whole sequence, the whole sequence is just perfect and, and culminates in this moment where she's like, it's morning. She did it just in time. She's looking down on everyone. She's so proud and everyone's looking up like, whoa. She's been sent home, but she didn't give that up. Yeah. Mulan's a feminist icon. She was strong female representation, representation I needed as a kid. Yes. yes. We're going to get gonna into that. that. Yeah. We're going to get into that irony. We're going to totally get into that. It's going to be so good. Yes. So what was your favorite thing, Landon? Uh, well, I tried this pimento. Shoe. Of course, uh, the sarcastic cranky dragon that is the si- the needed sidekick in every Renaissance Disney show. Uh, and of course, this one, Dishonor on You, Dishonor on Your Cow, Dishonor on Your Family, is the absolute best. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mushu makes the animated movie, in my opinion. Like, don't get me wrong. Fantasy, like, the icon, feminist icon. We got some other sarcastic great characters, but... I love Mushu mm-hmm. so much. <laughs> <laughs> I am a Mushu. <laughs> Whoa, oh, thank you so much Luna. for the gift, Lunar. Yeah, so I know it is um I know it is a um sub September. So um gift subs are twenty percent off right now. Ooh. So if you guys um are interested in subscribing, don't just subscribe yourself. Find a buddy and swap gift subs. 
Okay, so you can get that 20% discount. That's awesome. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we absolutely love... Oh my gosh! Irony, thank you so much for the additional gift subs. So let's see. Kay has one, Soda has one, Thumper has one. Oh, that's fabulous. I think Thumper is here. I didn't say hello to Thumper. Hi, well, Thumper. Are they here? Let's see. They might not be. It, um, they, might, they might just be because they were pretty, really active in the last stream. Got you. Never mind then. Yeah, I don't think Thumper's here yet. Because um, they had a prior engagement, but they'll be here later. Yes. Oh my gosh. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys so much. Soda, welcome in. Welcome in. Uh, yeah, so of course, part of the Disney Renaissance formula is including a, um, a funny sidekick. An right? animal sidekick. Mm -hmm. Do you notice something, Karen? Hmm. Do you notice that our two favorite things are from the 1998 version of Mulan? I didn't notice that. Yeah. Well, it is. <laughs> That's because the 2020 version sucks. Anyway, before we start down that, mm -hmm. not at all. <laughs> We're going to get into it. We're going to get into it. But yes. Okay. Well, let's, let's, let's set up some, let's set the scene first so that for those that it's been a while since they have seen, um, oh my gosh, thank you so much for more gift subs, Lunar. Oh Lunar, and, Lunar and Irony, you guys are my favorite. Oh my gosh, we got a MVP's hype train going. right here. We got a hype train going. I love a hype train. Yes. All right, guys. Um, Robin CF. Oh, Robin might, might stop by, um, this stream. I know they were Ooh. interested, so hopefully we'll see them later. Yeah, um, we're ignoring we have, we have soda. a long time to go, so. <laughs> we're ignoring soda because he wouldn't let Pepsi do zoomies around his desk. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's let's first explain the source material for this because yes. it's Disney, of course. They don't do anything original. They take source material. So this is an old Chinese um, fable that yep. this is based off of, like a folk tale, right? Yep. So, um... I think, uh, what's what's the next piece of text on there? So yes, the ballad was said to be written in the late Northern Wei Dynasty, which is about 386 to 543 CE. Mm -hmm. um, and during this time, there were a lot of wars happening before between the Mongolian Huns and the Chinese dynasties. Mm -hmm. And they were, ba they were battling for land through uh, what is now centralized China, uh, through the Black Mountains. And that's where the wall was being built at that time. Yeah. Um, so there was a lot of different wars that happened in that chunk of time, but also the chunk of time prior and after to that. Mm -hmm. So that China was... was always at war. <laughs> yes, China was always at war. Uh, thank you so much for the biddies, Lunar. And Aww. also um, for the gift sub. Thank you, um, Kendra. Make sure to let Sasha know that she's got a gift sub in here now. Yeah, um, so just yes. yell at her. Tell her she has to come. Yeah, so the, the original <laughs> ballad of, of Mulan, like it, because it's a folktale, it's been written and rewritten over and over and over. So depending on the source that you look at will depend on um, what you see for like its, its original. And you notice that there's differences, of course, between between the the first Disney version and the second Disney version, like it's Rurons in the second Disney version, it's Huns in the first Disney version. As I understand it, the Rurons is technically more accurate for what war was yes. going on at that time. But again, Ch Chinese people throughout the ages have rewritten the Ballad of Mulan over and over and over. So you can find different versions with different invading hordes that Mulan has to go fight. Um, and and yeah. for the Chinese and for the Chinese uh, people. Everyone who was an enemy was kind of Huns. Hun was Hun was very like in that day and age it was a very common term of like enemy. Uh whereas like when you actually broke down the Mongolian mm -hmm. kingdoms, that was what it turned yeah. out to be. There's lots uh, of different so during ones. that time it was Mulan was fighting the Huns, but historically accurate she was fighting the Morons. Mm -hmm. Um but the important thing to remember about this is that uh written history is not the history of a folklore tale. So just because it was written in the late Northern uh, Wei Dynasty doesn't mean that that's when it was invented or when it started being told. Mm -hmm. uh, there was word of mouth folklore and tales. So the Ballad of Mulan was actually incredibly hard to track down when it was written mm -hmm. um, and when it was created. So that's why as far as like timing goes and who the actual enemy is, there's a lot of controversy with that and a lot of like, Unknown. We just know that in the Chinese culture, it is incredibly important. It is one of their famous folklores. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and and some some Chinese history, some fun Chinese history for you guys is um, if you think you can think of China kind of like we think of the whole of Europe today. China was constantly having wars um, in that area, just like Europe was constantly having wars in history. Um, it's just that in in present time. 
China's not broken up into multiple countries. It's it's one country right now, but that's not always been the case. What we know of China today has sometimes been several different uh, countries, kingdoms, whatever, right? So it just happens. So happens to be that in the modern era, you know, Europe is multiple countries, even though we know in the past it's been, you know, basically one, um, or at least more than this. Oh my gosh! Thank you for those oh so my many goodness gracious. five gift subs. Holy shit! Katie. Thank you, oh Katie. My God. All right. So it looks like. Um, uh, Apostle has one. Mao, I think that's a bot. Oh, no. <laughs> I think they have one now. Yeah, um, yeah. Brie has Bri one. one. Um, Pickles has one. Ami Real Estate. Well, welcome, Ami. I'm not sure. I don't think we've met Ami, but I'm sure you're cool. <laughs> you're here, so you must be. Yep. Oh, my gosh. This is amazing, guys. Wow. Thank you so much. They just keep they just keep rolling We love in. a hype train. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> um, so, so yeah. So, in present day, we think of, like, Europe as, as multiple countries and as, in China as, as one country. But depending on when you look in history, that's not always true, right? Yeah. And and I compare it to that because I think that's a good frame of reference for people to understand um, that, that China had lots of different stages where they were... Where they were different sizes with different invading forces and changing who the the leader was or if it was multiple or just one or things like that so yeah, that's there, why you can find so many different versions of mulan because they were always fighting each other just like in europe yeah. the important thing is that this is just and it's not even important but to get it on a map this this lore was taking place about 30 to 50 miles outside of beijing mm -hmm. so that is consistent with all of the stories and everything like that which puts it right in the center of the black yeah. mountains mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yep so. Yep, yep. All and right. here's our here's our source on that. We've got a link. So if yes. you're interested in, in learning more, I'll paste that into the chat for you guys, um, yeah. for anybody that wants to. Um, so the whole point of this is, is that when Disney decides to go and uh, do an adaptation of this, we're already several steps away from the quote unquote original before Disney even touches it. Right. Um, so what that means is that Disney does the same thing they did with Hercules and they kind of like mix and match a bunch of different like names, pronunciations, things like that. Um, so like Fa is the Cantonese pronunciation of Mulan, which is why like in, in the animated version, it's like Fa Mulan, but in the real life, it seems like they changed their name to Hua Mulan. They didn't change her name. They're just trying, they just tried to get a little more consistent in the new version. That's all. <laughs> Which I think might be part of the... We'll get into that. Mm -hmm, anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I think it is important to talk about the actual ballad of Mulan. Mm -hmm. And what is it says and what's important about it. Um, and so the Battle of Mulan is a fable. Mm -hmm. And the important part of having a fable, what constitutes a story as a fable, is that there is a learned lesson. Yeah. That our main protagonist goes through a lesson that learned. Uh, and in this one, the lesson that is being tried to be taught is filial. It's filial piety. So filial pi filial. filial piety is yeah. how you is how you say this. Words and and essentially, it means. Um, honoring your elders especially your your parents like your father and mother but but it goes it goes to it goes to everyone so this is a confucian um ideal where it is believed that the the entire state like the entire state of china is doing its best that it's going to do its best whenever everyone is honoring their elders and then their those people honor their elders and so on and so forth oh my god lunar. thank you so much for oh the biddies god. lunar that's oh my gosh oh. um 10 10k biddies wow Thank you so much. This is awesome. This is so exciting. <laughs> um, <train>. Yes. <laughs> ah! Oh my God. Oh you got to level five. Holy crap. Holy moly. And I think we got it. We did. We got the level five hype train. Oh my God. Thank Holy you guys shit. so much. Um, oh, and you just unlocked, oh, Lunar unlocked the, uh, the last emote that anybody's been able to use, which oh is the, the sandwich from our last party. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. I love that so much. All right. So, so this is a concept that doesn't really translate super well into western culture like we don't really have this like we don't have this belief that like if you honor your father and mother that means that this this the united states is going to perform its best like that's just not a concept here it's not really a thing Sorry, that we do I'm laughing jane just came in <laughs> surprise <laughs> um yeah hey jane what's up 
Uh, the whole stream is gonna be this <laughs> i'm so down for it yeah i'm here that was the whole thing mm -hmm. it was a surprise i've been dropping little hints for about a month now mm -hmm. i am here the height difference is real mm -hmm. you keep no one guessed because it's baby it's funny no one guessed no one guessed this whole not, time not it's ridiculous <laughs> Um, um but yeah. So, yeah so we have the idea of respecting our elders like that's a thing but not like this like this is really serious like the entirety of society hinges on this yeah like, and that's the belief and it's seen in asian cultures mm -hmm. even to this day where it is incredibly important you are expected to be loyal to not only your culture as, as in china but also your family mm -hmm. that children's duty are to take care of their parents mm -hmm. And so what this really does is it it shows just how how much like how much this lesson is ingrained in Chinese culture. Mm -hmm. Because Mulan is taught is is a small story that is told to kids. Uh the story of a girl who goes off to war and at the end chooses her family above her own pride and her own ambition. Mm -hmm. uh, she comes back to her family and reveals what she has done. And she go even goes off to protect her father. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is a story about that. Um, and because it doesn't transfer easily into Western cultures, oop, we kind of lose that in both the 1998 version, although less so, but specifically in the 2020 version. Yeah, it does not translate in the 2020 version. Oh. So this is one of the things that the 1998 version of Mulan does that I think is so freaking genius. So it takes this this concept of filial piety and it individualizes it in a way that I feel like Western audiences can understand. Like if that in that movie, the, the relationship between Mulan and her father is so close. Like they like she is a daddy's girl, 100 um, percent. She I know that in the animated version, they don't show that she has siblings, but in the original ballad, she has siblings and in the 2020 version, she has siblings. So but, you know, she she is his favorite. They are incredibly close. Um, and, and so that way it allows Western audiences to understand the ballad a lot more and what's appealing about it to a Chinese culture in, in a way that, um, that really, that really translates, that really bridges the gap. Yeah. And I feel like that's part of what's so magical about the, um, the 2000, or sorry, the, um, 1993, 19, no, 1998 version of, of this story, of the, the Disney version of this story. Well, and even, they didn't change the overall point of the story. Mm -hmm. As much as the 2020 does. And we'll yeah. talk about that more when we get to the 2020. Mm -hmm. But in the end, uh, Mulan chooses to not take a promotion by the general mm -hmm. that is given. Uh, in, in, in the original ballad, she goes off to war because her father is called to duty. She disguises herself as a man. She goes off. She does the fighting. She succe is successful. She's offered. She saves the emperor's life. Is offered a position in his cabinet and turns it down to go home, and doesn't until then reveal that she has been a, that she has been dressed a, that she is a woman, mm -hmm. uh, and she doesn't reveal it until her family. Mm -hmm. So no one ever knows while she is in battle, mm -hmm. um, which is different a little bit. But it is that same idea of being offered something and then going home and returning to your family. Yeah, and in different in certain versions of it, they um they almost do start to punish her. You know, just like they do in the animated version, but the um the difference is that because filial piety is so important, it's oh, she did this for her dad, yeah. so it's okay that she broke the law and she deceived us because it's all for her dad, and that's what everybody should really be doing. They should be always putting their parents first, which is exactly what she did, so she's virtuous, even though she broke the law, yeah, and that's why it's so important to like you know, it's so it's such a Chinese cultural folk tale. That is hard to westernize. Uh, yeah. But the 1998 version did a pretty good job. Yeah, it does. So should we talk about the 1998 version? Yes, let's talk about it. All so right. before we get into, before we get into like um, the actual summary of it and, and breaking a few things down, we just wanted to talk about kind of the Disney renaissance so you can set the stage for um, our younger viewers that maybe don't necessarily remember 1998 movies and kind of what was going on at that time, <laughs> oh, right? Well, that hurts my heart to think about. <laughs> No. So long ago, right? Yeah. Um, so so Disney at this time was in the middle, well, towards the end, really, of the Disney Renaissance. This was the next to last Disney Renaissance movie. Mm -hmm. And the whole part of the point of these movies was to elevate and change um, what Disney movies had been up until then. So they started expanding beyond like the traditional princess movies. And they really wanted to make things that, that spoke to a wider audience, that... Um, 
you know, that were that were really that were really more more like four quadrant movies, you know what I mean? And and spoke to kind of like the, you know, the the go getter, like um sassier, more personality that people expected from from movies in the nineties. Yeah, we were moving into the age of that Disney realized its power in, in feminine and mm-hmm. could have feminist icons and could come away from the idea of the perfect princess being the perfect bride. Yep, yep. Um, and we see that, and we also see a lot of different kinds of stories within the Renaissance. We see Aladdin, we see Hercules, so we see char- we see where major protagonists are male characters rather than just princess characters. And mm-hmm. then Mulan, who isn't a pr- princess at all, and never becomes a princess. No, um, unless you look at the Disney princess line, then she is. <laughs> but she never becomes a princess. Mm-mm. So it is this like new, new version of ways of telling stories, and it was incredibly successful. Yeah. Um, Disney was successful before, but mm-hmm. it, it skyrocketed, and now it is considered the classics of yeah. Disney. Like, then the first one, the first one to follow this formula was The Little Mermaid, yep. um, and then through several movies, and then Mulan was towards the end. The last movie of the Disney Renaissance is Tarzan. And um, probably when I say that, you can see why they decided to switch formulas after that, because um, Mulan was really good, but... <laughs> I, I don't mind Tarzan. However, I don't think Tarzan could be... It doesn't compare. And also, it breaks its own formula Mm -hmm. a little bit. That's Mm -hmm. when Disney started breaking formula. Yep. And it really did transform into the next era, because then we also had technology. So instead of the 2D animation that it was, 3D animation became interesting. Mm Mm-hmm, for sure. And Tarzan's not a bad movie, but it doesn't hold a candle to, like, Beauty and the Beast, Mulan, um, uh, the, um, what's the other one, Little Mermaid, like, they're ex- those movies are excellent in a different way. Tarzan, I mean, it's good, but it's not excellent. Um, it could be better, right? Um, the other part of the dis- other part of the Disney formula that's really important is they make everything like a Broadway musical. Mm-hmm. So in a in a Broadway musical, you have the protagonist sing this "I want" song while the while following a three act structure. That's the basic formula, right? And then also you have to have a cute and funny animal companion. That's unique to Disney. But the I Want song, to give a little explanation to what I mean by that, is, for example, like in Beauty and the Beast, Belle um, has her her thing that she sings about how she wants so much more than this provincial life, Mm -hmm. right? So um, then in in, in Mulan, we have an I Want song in Reflection. So she, she, again, Disney takes this, this Chinese folktale and they individualize it in a way that Western audiences can understand. Like, it's not just about... Her father. It's also about how she she's not very good at the role she's been given in life in this version, which is not true in the original ballad. Um, <laughs> she's she's a regular girl. It's never implied that she's bad at being a girl, <laughs> but um, it uh, certainly is in the 1998 version. Oh yeah, but in the 1998 version, obviously. That is the case. She is not very good at being a girl. So she's on this trajectory that's like not fulfilling for her. And then she sees this opportunity to help her father. And it's like, well, it's not like I'm giving up anything by by bailing on this path I'm on now because it's not really working out anyway. The sacrifice is is the fact that she could be killed if she was found. It's not necessarily that she's sacrificing anything in her life. Exactly. Exactly. Um, Have you guys done Beauty and the Beast? No, we have not. But we can totally add it to the list. We can do that one. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, So that's the Disney Renaissance formula and um in my opinion mulan oh, perfected this formula and also a cute animal sidekick of course yeah and we have mushu cute, cute animal sidekick every single one whether they talk or not yeah and that can, has continued on mm-hmm. past the renaissance yeah a lot of a lot of um, even later era disney movies have the animal tang- sidekick still tangled comes to mind where mm-hmm. there's like three of them yeah <laughs> there is they they have, they have a plethora of sidekicks in that movie but yes uh, um, <laughs> and it's not just the heroes that have sidekicks because no. in Aladdin, Jafar has Iago. Yes. <laughs> so everybody gets a side. Some of these movies have uh, too many sidekicks, but yeah. <laughs> so yeah. No, really, it is that it is the make it like a Broadway musical, have really catchy songs, and have an animal sidekick, and a character that wants to leave the life yeah. that it has. Yeah, because so they have to have an I-, I want song. So I really think I really think that Mulan perfected this formula. Um and the other really cool thing about Mulan is is kind of some of some of the other Renaissance Disney movies did this a lot, like Aladdin did this a lot. Um but the way it was marketed was equally to little mm-hmm. girls and little boys. So like in Aladdin it was a princess movie but the princess wasn't the main character, yeah. right? So they marketed it to both. But Mulan was interesting in the fact that it was considered, I mean, she's not a princess in the movie, but it's and a it's a princess movie as far as, like, Disney's brand yeah, goes. But she wasn't marketed as a princess until no. people actually found, like, a connection to yeah. her. 
Yeah. Uh, but it was marketed to both. Like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if you remember, but um, but I remember because I, I loved these. But when Mulan was coming out, they had the Mulan Barbie, right? That had the outfit yes. that had the outfit from her um, her uh, scene where she's going to the matchmaker. Right. Yeah. And oh, my God, I had to have that Barbie. It was like the cool. Okay. It was like the coolest Barbie. And, um, you know, and Still it, is. oh, yeah, it's a really good one. <laughs> but uh, but they had it. They had it marketed to both. So so for little girls, it was like a princess movie, but it was a kick ass princess movie. Right. And for boys, it was like it's a war movie. Right. Yeah. So it was really good in that regard. It was really. Yeah, it was really the one that successfully did to both, because I, I think Aladdin had its had a way of doing it as well. But again, it was a princess movie, and the story, even though it involves Princess Jasmine, is not about Princess no. Jasmine. It's about Aladdin. Also, the marketing for Aladdin is a little bit different because to explain that, we'd have to go into Robin Williams and all that stuff, and that's not that's what this true. episode's that's about. Not what this episode's but about. yeah, all right. So we've been talking a lot about it. Yeah, why uh, Mulan so that's is why different? Mulan is different. Yeah. Let's talk about actual Mulan. So okay. You want to give us the 1998 version of? The yes. Movie? And if you could like click through these as I yes. kind of go through each sentence. Okay. So Mulan is being raised as the typical girl in China. She is of age to get married, so she's trying to figure that out. And she has a very close relationship. Oh, thank you for the howl, Lunar. Um, she has a very close relationship with her father. And showing this is how Disney's version helps Western audiences understand the story of why Mulan does what she does. Um, so her father is called off to war. In this version, it's the Huns. Um, probably because it's the most well-known ancient Chinese conflict to um, Western audiences. That's that's why I think they, they chose Huns for this. Um, if we could do a little bit farther. Sorry. You're good. Yeah, so Mulan sneaks off to join the war in her father's place because he is he's too feeble. She knows that if, if he goes off to war, like that he's probably not going to survive, right? Um, so since we're following the Disney formula, we need a cute animal sidekick. And we get Eddie Murphy dragon named Mushu. <laughs> <laughs> and also the cricket. We can't forget the cricket. That's true. And the horse. So many animal sidekicks. They're, but it's really Mushu. <laughs> it's I really mean, it's Mushu. really Mushu. He's the star of the animal sidekicks in this movie. Um, and through some silly shenanigans, he gets sent by Mulan's ancestors to protect her. Uh, this is a Disney edition. There are no magical anything in the original ballad. There's no dragons. There's no ancestors. Nothing like that. Um, but, uh, but this isn't the Disney version because you have to have an animal sidekick. So they, they make a dragon because it's, it's Chinese, right? <laughs> so she becomes a soldier. She makes friends with some gross boys and she learns to fight, but not by her brawn. She fights with her smarts. And while she's there, she develops a mutual crush on her commander. Um, and they, so, so basically what happens is after we have like a wonderful fighting montage with the best song ever, <laughs> um, they get word that a nearby village has been sacked by the Huns, right? So they go to check it out and they find out when they get there that everyone's gone. Everyone's died. Um, they were too late. They didn't save anybody. The Huns, they've moved on. So they encounter the enemy, and when they encounter the enemy, because the Huns have just raised everything in their path, they're just this tiny battalion against, like, the mass of the Hun army. But they win due to Mulan's smarts. So instead of trying to fight them head on, she buries them in an avalanche, and in the ensuing chaos, Mulan is injured. So they find out through that injury that, oh my gosh, Mulan is a woman. You know, Ping isn't real. It's a made up name. Um, and she's supposed to, <laughs> right? And she's supposed to be beheaded. Um, but instead, she's given a dishonorable discharge and abandoned because she did save the day, right? So that's kind of the compromise that they make here. And remember, this is a three act structure. So we have to have the protagonist at their lowest point. So that's, that's, here it is right That's here, low, right the there. lowest point. Um, so she finds out that the leader of the Hun army survived the avalanche and is making his way to the capital. So Mulan gets her shit together and she goes off to her former battalion to warn them. And her former battalion, while she's doing this, is being celebrated for winning the day, right? Because even though it was Mulan, um, it's it's the whole battalion that gets kind of, that gets the commendations, right? So the emperor, um, so Mulan goes to warn them they ignore her, but in the ensuing battle between the the leader and um, and uh, the couple of people, the the little people in the battalion in Mulan, she uses her smarts 
to win the day again. She does a fancy fan trick, so she gets the sword. Mushu helps her send by sending some fireworks over for the bombs. Also, the best last fight any Disney princess. It's so Anna good. Has. It's so, so good. good. I love this sequence too. Also, um, <laughs> the gross boys dressing up in drag will forever be my favorite. Oh my thing. god, it's amazing. It's a queer art. <laughs> True. Um, <laughs> so so when once this all happens, the emperor wants to reward her, but she declines in favor of returning home to her family. Um, and also, again, because this is a Disney movie, Shang goes with her because they have a crush on each other, right? Um, and then Mushu's also rewarded by the ancestors because they won the day and everyone lives happily ever after. Yay! And so the that's the girl gets the guy, the guy gets the girl, Mushu gets the promotion. That's what everyone wants. Yeah, so everybody gets what they want, and 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 you know none of the named none of the named characters have to die except for the villain. So um, it's wonderful. <laughs> I love this movie, and it's such a good movie. There mm-hmm. are so many things that are positive about it. First and foremost. The soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. This freaking soundtrack. It's so slaps. good. I still listen to this soundtrack. It's so good. It's one of the best um, ones. So you were talking about, like, this I've Gotta Do Something song. Like, the I, I Want get, song. The, the I, I Want, want song. song. Yeah. Um, and while it is, it is an interesting version for the formula in Mulan, because we have the, we have Reflection, mm-hmm. which is this I Want song. But it's not really I Want. It's more of, like... Who am I? Yeah. What What am I? Who am I? Can I be who I am? And also what is expected of me? She wants to find herself. She wants to find herself. Yeah. Um, and she wants to also, like, be accepted for who she is as well. Mm-hmm. And it's a really deep and emotional song. I think also for, like, young children to get. Yeah. <laughs> to I mean, see. even all these years later, like, it still speaks to me. Right. Because because she's experiencing what I think, um, you know, what I think a lot of us have probably experienced. I know I experienced it like being being a woman, but in a lot of ways kind of being bad at it. Right. And um, and not being like super girly or or other things in that in that vein. And um, she's basically singing about like, how how can I find a place for myself? It doesn't seem like there's a there's a place for me in this world. Yeah. Yeah. There is no, there's nothing, there's nothing where she fits. Um, It's a really beautiful song. It's a gorgeous song and it really hits home. And I think it it shows how much depth there is to the character in Mulan Mm -hmm. um, without her being a princess. Yeah. And so then we go to our next great song, which is Make a Man Out of You. Yes. (laughs) A banger. Oh my God. (laughs) If you go to any place where there are anyone between their 20s and 30s gathered, uh, and just start singing I Make a Man at You, I guarantee you the whole bar, building, whatever, will start shouting it back at you. It's a, it's a really good because song. Because everybody knows this song. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of it's one of the best um, Disney songs, in my opinion, that exists. It's so I think good. the only the only songs I can think of that I really enjoy more are like some of the villain songs. Yes. But as far as like just, just a standard and like and this song like makes the montage. Oh yeah. Like, no, no, the montage would be so boring without Oh my god. Song. Yeah, and we'll talk about that. <laughs> Cuz during this song they're having this whole montage of of Shang training training up these troops and um and uh, there's you know experiences that Mulan is having trying to to become a soldier and uh and it's just it's just amazing. It's just amazing. And it would not be it would not be what it is it without hits. this song. It yeah. Hits so well. Mhm. And then the last song is A Girl Worth Fighting For, which the magic of this song really comes at the end. Okay, so this song This one's also a banger. Yeah. So this is where they're they're marching off. They're gonna go they're gonna go find the Huns because they've been told that like that they're they're in this direction. They're gonna go they've been told that they need to go go find this uh this part of the army. And they're right? feeling high and mighty because they've just come off of this amazing train yeah. training montage where they've they've been rocking it. Yeah. Like, the progress they're doing, they're awesome. Yeah, so they're like it's it's like this very, this very like hopeful song about you know we're obviously we're all gonna go home. So let's talk about you know what we're looking forward to when we get home. Yep. Um. All all of our lady friends, right? So it's this very cute, very lighthearted song, and and then at the end of it, you get this you get this cut right. It's completely silent, completely silent, and then all of a sudden you see the raised village from the Huns, and it's just fire 
And, and this is what begins the second part of the movie. And what you'll notice, and this is something that is unique in Mulan and, and I think really magical, yeah. there are no more new songs. The only other songs that we get in the movie are towards the end, and it's a reprise. This is the last song. And it's not even the character singing it. No. Like the, it's it's in like the background. The, it's, the, it's, it's part of the soundtrack. It's yes. not part of the Broadway aspect of this. Yeah, they're not singing it. They're um, just playing it in the background. And it is this gut-wrenching moment because mm-hmm. we go from this upbeat happy song to this entire village is destroyed and this doll that we know belonged to a little girl is laying on the ash in the snow really and we sad. know that she's dead yeah uh and it really does like nail in the in the coffin knife mm-hmm. in the gut in a really real way yeah and like shang has a moment because he realizes that you know, he his father was probably in the battalion yep. that was that uh, they all got killed in that village, and it it becomes real. Mm-hmm. Like the idea of war becomes real, which is something that warriors go through, and, mm-hmm. and people who are training to go off to war, is that every single person who does that has a moment where they're like, "Holy shit! I can train as hard as I want. I can do as much work as I can, but it." It may never be enough. Right. I am risking my life and it is all on my shoulders. Yeah. And all the, all these guys that have been training with Shang over this time, it's like, it's kind of like they grow up in that moment. Like before they're just boys that were conscripted yep. and now it's serious. And and now it is, this is, this is no longer a game. This is, this is life and death. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it matters. It and matters the, now. And the fact that all of that can be said in a moment of just dropping off of a song. Mm-hmm. Because none of that is said in the actual. No, but movie. you feel it. Like you feel but it you in your know heart, it. and you know it as a kid, and you know it as an adult. Mm-hmm. And it um, still, it still hits good now. It still I hits think, good. I like. This is one of the most cinematic moments I think in all of Disney. Like, yeah. if I had to hit amazing directorial cinematic moments. This, this is song it. dropping off would be mm-hmm. easily top three. Absolutely. And and because, I mean, some of the Disney movies, because because they have this very strict Renaissance formula, some of the movies in this vein have some tone problems. I'm not going to call out Lion King because I love it, but it has some tone problems, okay? Oh, <laughs> I love Lion King. It's one of my favorites. I'm not hating so on it. Good. I'm not hating on it. But the, the middle part with Timon and Pumbaa doesn't match any of the rest of the movie. Anyways, so if you want to know how to change tone in, in what you're working on in a way that is believable, that hits, that, um, that follows through, and that everyone will love, this this is the way to do it. Well, this is how you do it. I also think what this what this did was show that Disney movies can handle bigger concepts. Yeah. Like and and that kids can be invested in what is now modern day like Pixar stories. Mm-hmm. I really do think that like seeing how kids and seeing how the world reacted to this this large emotional thing that was laying beneath the story inspired for movies like soul and inside out and even parts of like tangled and all of the and and even um parts of frozen Mm -hmm. uh to really be able to hit that like stories can matter these these things can be deeper than just surface level this is definitely the heaviest of all the disney renaissance movies i would say yeah and it's and there's i mean and and even tarzan even though tarzan had already been made has some heavy moments too Mm -hmm. it was really it's really fascinating to see where the disney Mm -hmm. renaissance goes through yep um but yeah no this it is it is a magical moment yeah it's really really good all right so yep the third act contains no music so here we go we gotta talk we gotta talk a moment about another part of... listen <laughs> just a shame just i we don't have a lot of notes on this part <laughs> we just need to bring attention to the bisexual icon that we all deserved which is shangley so i have something i have something to tell you guys so the, this bottom left picture right here this one right here that's like kind of right above um landon's head to the left a little bit Mulan kicked him and he fell down and made this face. I'm just saying, like that happened. That's canon. And if I could have put a gif in here and been confident it would play properly, I would have put a gif so you could see the whole transition. But literally, she's like, boom, with her leg, and he goes, he falls and down, and he's like, it. hmm, and he's enjoy. Into it. <laughs> Um, and it's never a big deal, A, because Disney doesn't want to bring attention to it, but also 
Because people, because men who are in the army know that they are attracted to men and then they're just surrounded by men. Like, that's mm-hmm. a thing that happens. <laughs> yeah, like that, uh, there's a Tumblr post, which if you, you've probably seen it if you like Mulan, but um, I think it's really funny. And it's pointing out that, like, Shang's bisexual crisis is not having to do with learning that he likes men because he's attracted to Ping. It's learning that Ping is actually a woman named Mulan and he was attracted to a woman for the first time in his life. And I subscribe to this. This I, is this true. This is the <laughs> I think we all deserve. Uh, no, it's it's amazing. It's yeah. fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, no, it's we we just needed we also just needed four pictures of him, three pictures yeah. of him shirtless. Like that's the other thing too. Like an animated guy should not be this ripped and kind of attractive. Also. I mean, for real. Like, <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to think of like I'm trying to think of like Disney man. I was I've been more attracted to than than Shang. I mean, um, the monster fucker in me has to say like only the Beast probably. He's pro- this is probably second only to the beast. But not as the beast. No, well, as, or not, as I mean, not, the beast. Not as not the as, human. Yeah, when he changes to Adam, the animation's so weird in that scene. Tarzan, I can't. Tarzan's a I can't. Uh, it's hot. okay. Well, he, but like, what's <laughs> wonderful about Shang is that he's like, he's like smart in all of the charming ways, but he's not like good at everything. No. So I feel like he's just like, he's like really real in like this very, and I, I just really love this character. Well, we're going we're gonna to talk about like the, the depth of character, but Shang in general, like we also, we get him when he's a kid with a chip mm-hmm. on his shoulder and then has to lead an entire army. Yeah. And that moment that, like, it hits Mulan that this is real, it hits her three friends that this is real, it also hits Shang mm-hmm. that it, this is real, uh, that he's about to lead his men to die. Yeah. Yeah. And these, the, where he didn't even necessarily, like, when they, when they first get, when Mulan first gets there, the first characterization we get of Shang is basically him being told, like, you have to lead these guys. I know that you've never done this before, but you just figure it the fuck out. Yeah. Right? And he's like okay <laughs> <laughs> and, he's, and he's super excited like like they all are like yeah. war is a thing i grew up with a general for a father i'm about ready to prove myself mm-hmm. and then oh this is gonna be so much harder and then realizing that like these if i don't do my job right these men are gonna die yeah mm-hmm. uh and it just brings such a depth to him and we'll get into that a little bit more in a second actually right now yeah because because uh, <laughs> that was a, another thing about this movie that um that was really amazing for the time it's not so not quite as amazing anymore no, this happened like, somewhat but we don't want to give a huge amount of credit because this is not diverse enough for a char- for a show that the entire cast mm-hmm. is or the entire characters are all Chinese. However, uh, for the time, like if yeah. you look at Lion King and who was actually a person of color in Lion King, no, it is it's sad like, considering the, it's like literally just Mufasa. Yeah, right. It's, it's literally just yeah. Er- so like, and, and this er- was er- and this was true in animation because because you never see the actor; it's just their voice. Um, animation. All, up up until recently, really, was all about colorblind casting, mm-hmm. which in Hollywood, what that ends up translating to is white. all white casting. So not so great. Um, but Mulan was different. This was the this is the first time that I can remember um, watching these Disney movies and the the cast behind the scenes was not just all white because like Aladdin is like that too. Yeah. There's not really any like Arabic or Indian or you know because there's different regions that Aladdin might come from. But either way, there I mean in the in the animated Aladdin, it's all white voice actors for the most part. And um, Mulan's not like that, and that was that was really revolutionary. And for the, the directors time. and producers took care of that. They wanted Asian actors. Mm-hmm. They wanted uh, a diverse a diverse group. Uh, Eddie Murphy just I think was the comic at the time so i not necessarily it was trying, he was it, chosen because of that no he was trying he was tra- he was a popular comedian he was, at the he time was doing the robin williams yeah thing. yeah and they wanted they wanted their robin williams for this movie so and it was a success i mean the mushu is he is he's known, a, he's he is known for this in donkey so. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> um but no i think that this is this is something that is in completely like was was unique for the time. Yeah. Uh, and then also talking about the characters that they played. There mm-hmm. is not a 2D named character except for maybe the Emperor's Assistant. Yeah. he The Emperor's Assistant is not, there doesn't have much depth to him. But... <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, like no, there's like no depth. But most of the other characters really do get a significant amount of, um, of, of depth and understanding. Mm-hmm. They have multiple personality traits. Um, they all and, have arc. Yeah, like, they, they all start somewhere and end yeah. somewhere completely different. Yeah, like all the friends that she makes in the in the army, they go through very similar like growing up 
and um, and accepting themselves kind of arcs. It's just that they're not at the forefront, of course, because they're not the title character. But they they do, they do the same thing, and and you see it. They show it, which is just good writing. Yeah, like, that's the other thing too is that Disney Disney developed this formula that was going to be a success. Disney, like today, is a powerhouse, which means if they want to put out shitty movies. They can put out shitty movies and still make money, mm-hmm. as we've seen. Yeah. Um, and we'll, <laughs> we'll talk get to about that. It in a second. <laughs> but I, I think that it's important to know that, that the people who wrote and created this movie cared about this movie. Yeah. And they didn't want what ended up happening with Chinese with China's response to be the response. Like they they did try to handle this story with care and with complexity that it deserves. Yeah. They, there, there's you can tell the attempts were made yeah right um now i think that that kind of probably takes us to to the flaws this movie unfortunately isn't perfect um no. e- e- even though it's perfect in my heart it's still the ni- <laughs> it's, it's still, still the 90s it's still the 90s and they do rely kind of heavily on asian stereotypes like for example when they try to work in their animal companion they make it a dragon even though like this is one of the few fi- chinese folk tales that has literally no supernatural elements at all but they add in ancestor worship and a dragon Mm -hmm. now the way ancestor ancestor worship works in um in chinese in china culturally it's it's not really what's portrayed in this movie it's literally just stereotypes to help anchor a western audience well and the stereotype also of how all of the relatives treat each other Mm -hmm. is also a very heavy asian stereotype too as far as like none of the elders getting along which yeah they're all squabbling that's just and that's just not really it's not really true to real life but it's very true to the to the asian stereotypes um and this isn't to excuse it but it is something to bring up that the while there are heavily asian stereotypes present being Asian or being of that culture was never the butt of the joke. Yeah. Which, unlike certain other movies, Lion King, <laughs> Aladdin, looking at you, um, it was the butt of the joke. Yeah. And so I think that that is something to sit there and go, okay, that's awesome. We're better now and should be better now. But at that point in time, I think that is something to, like, highlight. Like, in 1998, it was really hard to find somebody calling this movie racist. Yeah, and no. I think it's and I think it's largely because um, even though there are unfortunate stereotypes present that are not necessary, it's I think it's because Asians are never the butt of the joke in yeah. this movie. There's never like, ha ha, look at this weird Asian stereotype, right? Like this that doesn't happen. Something weird, and it's because and it's and it's something that is Asian culture. Yeah, like, yeah, belief. Yeah, uh, and it's there's there's none of that, um, even to entertain a Western audience, uh, where where racism with Asians is something that even to this day, is under the radar and some people still don't consider racist. Yeah, even though, like, it um, because is. Because if they're not black. Yeah. Uh, even though it incredibly mm-hmm. is, uh, there, are, there are no jokes like that present. No, absolutely not. Not like that. So so you're, it's hard to find somebody back in 1998 calling this movie racist. But that being said, <laughs> um, Chinese audiences did not like this movie. So I, I just want to read a little bit from the Wikipedia article okay. so to give you guys some context for what was going on here. Um, so Disney was keen to promote Mulan to the Chinese, hoping to replicate their success with the 1994 film, The Lion King, um, which was one of the country's highest grossing Western films at the time. So what that sentence means is like Chinese people, they freaking love Lion King. Uh, I mean, everybody loved Lion King, right? Um, but the Chinese people loved it. Okay. So Disney also hoped it might smooth over relations with the Chinese government, which had soured after the release of Kundun a Disney-funded biography of the Dalai Lama that the Chinese government considered politically provocative. For those of y'all that don't know, there's a whole um, drama about who the Dalai Lama is in Tibet versus who the Chinese government considers the Dalai Lama, and there's a lot of really awful stuff going on there. So um, so Disney made something that was very, like, more, more towards the Tibet side and, and, and their opinion of all the Dalai Lama stuff, um, which, you know... If you look at the history, it, they're the authority on it. The um, you know the Eastern Chinese, like in, in Beijing, they're not. But you know the Chinese government doesn't feel that way. 
But anyway, so China had threatened to curtail business negotiations with Disney over that film. And as the government only accepted 10 foreign films to be shown in China per year, Mulan's chances of being accepted were, they were pretty low at the time. So finally, after a year's delay, the Chinese government did allow the film to be, have a limited Chinese release, but only after the Chinese New Year, so as to ensure local films dominated the more lucrative holiday market. So basically, um, Disney got in, but they got in a year late and in the shitty slot. So box office income was super low, and due to both unfavorable release date and rampant piracy that was going on in um, in China at the time, and and still goes on to in a lot of ways, um, the Chinese people they didn't they didn't like it like they just didn't go see the movie they didn't show up and and even the ones that showed up disliked it because so here's the thing there's there's um there's a misunderstanding i think about different art styles at this time because we're not really sharing as much between china and and western animations and so they they see mulan as like she has the the smaller eyes and the larger looking forehead whereas animators in in the west are going to look at that and say well we made sure she looked she looked asian but um chinese audiences are going to see that and think that um, she she doesn't because it's just it's different styles of animation. Like um, I'm going to talk about anime for a second, uh, but this still this applies to China too. I'm just using anime because I think more people have probably seen anime. There's, but you know, there's more draw, yeah, draw and there's more. But you know, like they have the big eyes and the little mouth, and like none of the characters really look like humans. <laughs> And and that's more of what the the Asian animation was like in the '90s too. It was very like idealized depictions. So when they look at this, um, what we would consider in the West as an accurate looking Chinese animation, to them it looks very foreign, right? So um, so there was a lot of complaints about uh, Mulan's appearance, the way that her face was drawn. And then also, of course, um, the additions they made from the myth, the Chinese people did not like the additions of like the ancestors and Mushu and uh, things that just things that just had nothing to do with Mulan that they had grown up with. Right. So basically, uh, China hated the 1998 version. Yeah. Did not not like it. Popular. Mm -mm. Um, I very quickly want to add something because I saw that Katie put something in the chat that I think I learned. A, they learned a little of, from their lessons and mistakes from Pocahontas, uh, relying on those stereotypes. And I actually want to say I disagree with that. Um, first of all, for animated movies back in the day, uh, it took upwards of five to six years to produce these animated movies. Uh, Pocahontas was came out in 95, which means Mulan was already underway. Mm-hmm. And as far as who was on the cast crew production, they had nothing in common other than being under the production house of Disney. Mm-hmm. Um, and at that time, too, Pocahontas wasn't poorly received. Uh, we have to remember that in the 90s, wh- how Pocahontas was is how we spoke of indigenous people back then. Mm-hmm. Um, and that story is how it was told. It was more poorly received than Mulan, though. Because there was yes. some there was some um, Oscar controversy over Pocahontas. Like, Disney was convinced that Pocahontas was, like, another Oscar ticket, just like Beauty and the Beast was. And people were like, nah. <laughs> yeah. But as far as, like, sales go, as far as, like, uh, how it was received in media... There wasn't much of there wasn't there wasn't articles publishing. There was nothing calling Pocahontas the racist until a few years later. Yeah, and that and it was largely um, a lot native people calling it racist. Yes, and you know you know how we treat native yeah, people we don't here treat native people so well at all. <laughs> yeah, and then um and but there were other and there were other native people that were part of the production saying actually it wasn't racist. So it was very much like of course you know that's what people what gets published is. Oh, this native person says Pocahontas isn't racist. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so so it is. I don't think like Disney didn't learn lessons. This is, I think, something that just sit there and say that this was good on the cast, crew, and production company. Well, I think the writing for Mulan and the, and the, the writing, writing for yes. Mulan is just is just overall better. They, I mean, they it, they really took care to try to bridge the gap between the the translation that they chose of the story into making it make sense for the western audience so all of the changes that were made um it's very clear why they made them you know and again there's no pl- there's no place where Asians are the butt of the joke unlike in Pocahontas where there's bots where it's like her best friend's a tree are you serious you know <laughs> Um, so yeah Mm -hmm. (laughs) jane i also can't believe i'm here Mm -hmm. (laughs) all right let's get to the bad part of this okay (laughs) 
Um, do you want to do you want to do the yeah, summary for this I will one? I read the, the summary for the nineteen or for the twenty twenties version of Mulan. Uh, okay. Uh, Disney's midlife crisis. I will use this metaphor today. I'll also use it during next week's stream. Can we get it? Can we go to the next slide and then just like just advance? Just go ahead and advance the pictures okay. so they can see them all. And then. And there we go. Okay, right. let's go. So Disney right now is going through what I like to call its midlife crisis, which basically means that it's like looking back in its renaissance days and going, wow, I was so hot with a convertible back there. Uh, and now it's purchasing a convertible. The convertible just happens to be <laughs> the live action remakes. And it's like, no, you were hot because you were cool and not because you had a convertible. And it doesn't <laughs> understand that yet. Anyway, um... Let's talk about the live action summary. Okay. So much... don't worry, don't worry, Lunar, that you haven't seen it. We're about to tell you everything that's important in that movie, and then you don't have to watch it if you don't yeah, want to. Yeah, so spoilers, <laughs> but also like, yep. Yeah. Uh, much to the dismay of her parents, Mulan is an adventurous young woman rather than an expected demure child like her sister. Her family tries to teach her about the power of chi that only a few women seem to possess. Uh, her. Yep. Regardless of her wild nature, they hope that she will find a husband to marry until a little bit of spilled tea causes the matchmaker to call her a disgrace. Meanwhile, during this, an outpost on the Imperial Army is invaded by, by a commander who uses the aid of a witch and her magic to take over the warriors, leaving alive only one person to deliver the message to the Emperor that Ro the Roran are coming for him. Uh, this causes the Emperor to decree that every household must provide one man to fight the invading army. When the Imperial Army arrives for Mulan's family to send a young man, uh, it causes much grief that, he, that Mulan's father doesn't have any sons so that he will go himself, even though he is older and crippled. Mulan leaves to take his place. However, training is cut short uh, when she enters the, the facility. Uh, cut short as Khan and the Rowan advance, uh, advance. Mulan and her fellow soldiers quickly realize that they are outmatched and unskilled against the army. Yeah. The witch. By the way, I just want to point out, because I did this on Go purpose, ahead. I think it's funny. I picked the picture of the man crying for talking about <laughs> this part because this sequence made me cry in a bad way. Okay, yeah, proceed. No, it also made me <laughs> cry in a real bad way. <laughs> Writing this was painful. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the witch knows, finds out when she gets one-on-one -on -one with Mulan, uh, that she is hiding her identity by sensing the magic within her. She mocks Mulan for serving under a man, but... The disguise saves her from the witch as the bandage binding her chest blocks the attack. Any trans man is like, mm, my binder really helps save my life here. That's what's happening. That's what the lesson is being learned. Um, sta stab proof binders, y'all. <laughs> St stab proof binders. Someone, if that doesn't exist, someone get on that. Someone get on that, you'll be big in the trans community. Um, <laughs> Mulan, could, Mulan could have used it. Yeah, honestly, she did. Uh, well, she, she did. It. Yeah, there we go. Um, Mulan then returns to fight as a woman and causes the avalanche to fall on the remaining Roran um, soldiers. Mm -hmm. She is forced to then return home where she is once again confronted with a witch who explains that she was once shunned too and that Khan treats her, treats her as an equal. She explains that Khan's true plans for the, are to kill the emperor. Mulan returns to the army to explain what she was told. Uh, then Mulan goes off, saves the Emperor. The witch sacrifices herself to save Mulan's life. Mulan kills Khan while using her magic to fight him. Mulan returns to her village and is reunited with her family, only to be asked to join the Imperial Army by the side of her commander, who is definitely not Shang. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, okay. So I just want to want to break down a couple of things in, in this summary. That I want to mention. Yes, she has a sister. In in the in some versions of the in all the versions of the ballad, she has mm -hmm. uh, siblings, right? So um, so so not having um, so she doesn't have uh, she's not an only child like she is in the animated version. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, but still, like in, in every version, uh, her father only has daughters, right? Just usually it's multiple, except the yeah. Disney version. Um, so a couple of things here that I just want to point out that uh, that are like weird changes so like when she spills the tea it's not her fault but no. she's totally blamed for it but yep. it's literally like her sister gets scared by a spider mm -hmm. and then mulan tries to save the day and then she screws up saving the day 
Yeah. It makes no sense. She like th- she sacrifices her dignity to save her sister's dignity almost. Right. Um because Which shouldn't be bad. Like which should be the See bad like she like look, like she catches her... she catches them, but then she falls afterwards, but she did catch them at one point. Like I it's but so that's stupid. what makes her a bad woman and powerful enough to possess chi. It's dumb. It's, it's dumb. It's so dumb. The whole thing is so dumb. <laughs> um okay. So so here's here's a couple things that happen with this movie. Of course, um Disney knows if they can figure out how how they they screwed up before and make it right, they can win big in the Chinese box office, right? Yeah. So they they're working with the Chinese government from go on this movie. Um so that's something to keep in mind. There are definitely there are definitely things in this movie that um to me smack of the government interference mm-hmm. like towards towards the end when she's talking with the witch and the witch is explaining how you know she was shunned for being a woman with with powerful chi and how mulan might be shunned too and mulan is like no i know my place like to like what's the difference like yeah <laughs> it makes no sense it makes no sense like why why isn't mulan being punished she's literally doing the exact same thing as as the witch did it's you know why? Why was the witch punished when she showed China her? She it may, there's no internal consistency in this movie. Also, by the way, None. yep. Um, another thing that that I wanted to no, we'll get we're getting to that later. Okay, I was gonna what, what characters next? Oh yeah. I messed so up the animations. I'm sorry. Characters. She's not supposed to be on the screen yet, but That's we'll okay. just pretend. Okay. So the father, the father and Mulan, they are quite different in this version, aren't they? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Mulan isn't. Mm, I, again, I don't understand necessarily the characterization of Mulan in this version. Yeah. Because she is not a strong woman, nor is she a demure woman. Yeah. It was like they tried to tow both lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They tried to do uh, both they were at like, the same time. We're going to please the the Chinese audience or the government who's going to greenlight this, because basically. Because China, because the because Mulan was so ill received, they knew that they were going to have to jump through a lot of hoops to get the Chinese government on on their side. Yeah. Um. So that was in mind during all of this. Mm-hmm. So she, we really like. She like wants to be the perfect woman, a Chinese woman, um, who is a mother and a homemaker and all of that. But at the same time, they want her to be the feminist icon that she. And that our culture has made her Yeah, that, that American kids would, you know, or American millennials that were kids at the time are going to expect. And instead, what they just made was a really forgettable character. Yeah, they made a character that's nothing. I I <laughs> could not tell you anything about Mulan if I hadn't had to do this. Right? Like, it. so she doesn't match any, she doesn't match, like, the, the folk version that Chinese nope. people expect. She doesn't match the, the Disney animated version that Westerners are going to expect. She's just, she's just nothing. She's kind of like a... Wall. Yeah, she just does whatever the script demands her to do. Yes. Um, and she has no internal consistency within her character. Like the animated version is so good because it shows that, like, okay, there's care with her character. Yeah, like Mulan. Mulan has a couple of different personality traits that all work really well together. She's not very good at being a girl, unfortunately. So, um, but she really loves her father, and so when she goes off to battle, she throws herself completely in. Oh, thank you for the host, Lunar. Um, she throws herself completely into being a soldier in in what is implied the first time that she's really put forth serious effort in something and she manages to use her intelligence to to figure it out and so she's just she's just this really amazing character that the whole point is like oh when she has something that she cares about like she you can achieve it if you have passion and hard work and um and you use the skills that you have uh, which is exactly what she does but in the live action version she's given these like chi powers which don't make sense. We'll talk about that in a second. We'll talk about why the chi is so stupid. But she's given these powers from birth, and it's just an inherent part of her. Yep. And she doesn't have any skills, so to speak, of. She just has these powers that she was born with. And these powers are supposed to be because she, and again, we'll talk about chi and stuff like that, but it's supposed to be because she is a strong-willed character. But there is nothing in the script, movie, or plot that makes her strong willed. Yeah. Like she just she does what she's supposed to what she thinks she's supposed to do. Mm-hmm. She thinks she's supposed to say take her father's place. She she takes her father's place. She thinks she's supposed to become a woman because the witch says she should be as a woman, 
So she comes out as a woman. Mm-hmm. Uh, she thinks she should save the emperor. So she saves the emperor. She mm-hmm. thinks she should embrace the chi. She embraces the chi. She thinks she should die the chi. She denies the chi. Yeah. Like, it's really, she thinks what she, what someone tells her to do, she does it. It's whatever the plot demands. Like, it yeah, really is it more really about is. the plot. It's So the plot drives Mulan along in this version instead of Mulan driving the plot along. Yeah. Like, like she does in the animated version. Which is part of what makes this movie so bad because mm-hmm. if this was just a singular movie it'd be a boring movie however compared to the genius of the 1998's writing it's yeah dead yeah and then um, so then also her father her so her father, father is very different in this version too i think yeah okay so here's the thing like in the 1998's version her father was gentle he was. He didn't scream the, the the few minutes of screen time he got. He didn't scream warrior. But that's what I liked about him is mm-hmm. that he was this man who who came from war and discovered the beauty in the world. Mm-hmm. He survived war and discovered the beauty. Um, but it's not very much that stereotypical Chinese culture like father type figure yeah, like, like the, when you think about the stereotype you think of like the over overbearing parent and, right and culturally wise like that the man is supposed to run the household right in china so he is not necessarily what the chinese people expect to see when they see a father figure yeah so knowing that they're making this movie playing for chinese audiences they want to find that familiarity that we usually expect to see in yeah. in our in Western movie fathers, mm-hmm. right? They want to hit that same note. The problem is, is that that note is completely different. Yeah. To what so the then, so then what they, is. so then what that, what ends up happening is they cause again, just like they did with Mulan, they cause the character to be internally inconsistent. Yeah. And so then it doesn't matter if they make him match the stereotype in the right way. He doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So like one. Second, <laughs> so who cares? So one second he'll be really calm and loving and encourage her to like see her power and know that she exists and that she is very powerful, but at the same time be like, never show anyone and also you're a huge disappointment to me. Yeah, like I knew when I was watching this movie, like when he yells at her, there there was no saving the movie, for me anyway. Like that's the end. If they destroy the close bond that Mulan and her father have, to me, I'm like, I don't understand this movie anymore. Yeah, and it also makes it really hard for that Western ideology right the yeah. reason why it made sense in 19 the 1998 version for mulan to sacrifice everything for her father from the western audience's perspective is because she loves her father mm-hmm. her father is a gentle and kind person we don't have that aphelia uh, a fili- filial piety fi- filia pi- piety yeah. thank you <laughs> uh, we don't have that filial piety in our culture mm-hmm. um so it's not automatically assumed. Whereas in this version, as a Westerner watching this sh- this movie, we're like, I'm not even sure Mulan loves her father. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not sure Mulan's father loves her. Mm-hmm. So again, it is trying, it's trying to build a movie that is for two very different cultures and do very different audiences and doing neither well. Yeah. Yeah. So, spoilers, what that ends up meaning is, guess what? Westerners and Chinese people both hate this movie. (laughs) (laughs) Um, There's also a bunch of, there's also some cut characters, of course. Oh, oh, yeah. So they they cut, they cut um, Mushu. Which, they cut Mushu for the point that they didn't want magic in this. Yeah, oh, so curious. They cut Mushu for no magic. And Yeah, Mushu was the unrealistic thing about this movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. If they would have put Mushu in, it would have made the 2020 version super unrealistic. If they had had just kept Eddie Murphy, like, I'm like, it could have just been Eddie Murphy in a dragon suit. I would have been okay with that. (laughs) I mean, they made the cricket, they made the cricket a human. They could have just literally had Eddie Murphy on screen and him be like, (laughs) yeah, he'd been like, yo, I traveled from the West. I'm Mushu. Sup? And it could have just literally been Eddie Murphy. And I mean, I would have been sold. It would have <laughs> it it been better. Given, it would have given this movie a whole extra star. At just least. Just to let you know how bad this rating at is. At least something would have given me joy in the movie if it, they did that. It would have been like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> but no. No. It didn't, it didn't succeed. But no, this movie uh, is completely joyless and soulless in every way. So they <clears throat> they took out Mushu, and then they also took out Shang, because yeah. Shang is a bisexual. And right, but they also... We- but they have to have a general. So basically, they replace Shang with Shang Light. And again, they make a totally, 
like they make a character that's like nothing. Yeah. Like they still have the, this the crush. This movie is nothing. It's just yeah. a bunch of nothing characters doing nothing things. Right. And like they have this, they have like the Shang replacement, right? And so him and Mulan still have a little flirtation, but it is like the driest, least romantic flirtation. Because they want to make it really not gay. <laughs> but it's so gay. It, it, it's so not gay because there is, no, it's like watching two clouds flirt with each other. Exactly. <laughs> it's nothing like, there. And, and at this point, like, we, we have no reason to care about Mulan. We know this man is supposed to be the Shang replacement, so we're upset that it's not Shang. And, it, and then we have like, to watch them flirt badly. But also, like, if... It makes me so angry that they're like, we're gonna take out Shang, but give you the same exact character mm -hmm. and just call him something else. Uh huh. That's what it they did. It makes no sense. If they had been like, we're changing Shang's name to something that is slightly more accurate to the time period, I would have been like, makes sense to me. But no, they try to pretend like it's a whole new character. It is a whole new character. It's like so ridiculous. And it's. It is beyond, it's just, it's infuriating. That's yes. what it honestly is. <laughs> so they've taken out two of my favorite things. Mm -hmm. They've completely erased everything I love about Mulan, the character herself. Yeah. Everything I love about the father. That's my four favorite characters mm -hmm. right there. Gone. <laughs> yep. And it's not even any more accurate to the original ballad. So no. we get nothing in return well, it, for well, these sacrifices. I mean, we do get something in return. <laughs> what do we get? We get the witch. Oh, wow. <laughs> 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 okay, so let me so let me explain also. So I haven't said this, but um, for for y'all that don't know, I actually studied Chinese language and history and literature um, in college. I have a, a minor in in this. Okay, so I have a very academic understanding of this, not a like real cultural understanding. But that's where my knowledge and a lot of this comes from, so that y'all are aware. Okay, so in China, if you want to have like this evil magic woman, that exists. Yeah. Okay, like that concept exists. They have like. Um, fox spirits typically is what you'll see. So like, you know, in, in English we say like, oh, that's a foxy lady and it means sexy. No, foxy ladies in Chinese is like tricky, devious, devious adulterous, yeah. um, right? But there is no concept in China of like a witch, right? So a, a witch in, in Western culture is a woman that is punished for, you know, doing magic and, and living... Doing Un, like doing, uh, yeah, un doing magic that is against the Christianity. Religion. Right. So it's like she does magic. She lives on her own. She doesn't have a husband. You know, she's she's all girl power, right? Like that's that's a Western witch. This concept does not exist in China because it because, doesn't exist because magic in China, and we'll talk about Qi in a bit. But that idea of like life energy and magic is something that is common throughout the culture. Yes, and throughout all the lores. So yeah, like, the idea of a woman possessing that. Is not an evil thing. No, there's plenty of um, of stories of Chinese women, Chinese very powerful Chinese women that um, that have magic, and they're never punished for having magic. Now, sometimes they are punished because they do shitty things with their magic. They hurt people, right, or they violate certain social norms. But they're not punished for having magic. It's totally fine for a woman to have magic in China. It's about all about what she does with it. Uh, thank you so much for clipping, Lunar. I'll have to check out what that oh, what okay. that clip is. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's just, it's just crazy. So they add in this witch character, which is like the most un-Chinese thing about the movie mm -hmm. in a movie where the, in the original concept of it, they already cut Eddie Murphy dragon because they didn't want so much magic. So then they add in a witch magic. who is, who is not only well, magic, but a very Western version of magic. Yes. It's a Western version of magic. And then like purposely story-wise she's trying to be a foil of Mulan like the Mulan that isn't loyal to her people mm -hmm. who isn't loyal to her family yeah the Mulan who violates filial piety basically yeah. that's what that's what she's, that's supposed, what she's supposed, to supposed to be so she's like this idea of like come to the dark side Luke mm -hmm. like very very much this person who's supposed to tempt Mulan but because Mulan is so flat and has no personality. She can't be tempted. Yeah, she's never tempted. There she's is never, never tempted. There's never a point in time that I believably am like, mm, Mulan really might want that. Right. Like, at I, no as a moment. Woman, like, was watching The Witch. Actually, here's the thing. The Witch, my favorite character out of the movie, because I actually think that they had to give her an excuse to exist there. It looks, like I, it looks like that she's Irony's favorite character, too. It's... So, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think that that's you. That's Irony is saying that to you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That you're the you're the queen. And oh, you thank stand. you. 
Um, but yeah, no, for, for me, I mean, because they had to give her reason to be there mm-hmm. because she's the only character who wasn't there before. Mm-hmm. So they had to give her a reason to be there and exist. So it just is a whole fucking mess. It's, and, it's such a mess. So it is frustrating that she's supposed to play this downfall other side of the grasp perspective of a character that we don't care about. Yeah. And also like, it's just boring. (laughs) Yeah. It's just really boring. And this is, and this is the thing that's so silly with these characters and the changes that they've made to these characters is if they, if they had tweaked things just a little bit, I think that they could have gotten something that actually worked. But even though you have a lot of um, Chinese people in front of the camera, you know, um, doing the acting, there are no Chinese people behind the camera in this movie. None whatsoever. And the witch character is a really good example of where, like, anybody that knows anything about Chinese folklore could have been like, here's some adjustments you need to make right now to make this character work. I think also, like, it's like that idea of, it, it feels very similar to when, in the 90s, diverse books were about diverse characters written by white people. Yes. And you can tell when there is a person of color who is written by a white person. This movie is so obviously produced and written by white people. Yeah. Who have no clue about actual diversity or actual cares about Chinese culture. That's what it seems like anyway. Um, And I think that's what it is, too, because they do misunderstand like Chinese culture yeah, here. In a they, lot of they ways. They take out, I mean, they took out the entire point of the story is mm-hmm. that Mulan doesn't want any glory of this. She doesn't want to grow for any of this. She just wants to protect her family. And they ruin that completely. But the way they give her the sword her, at the end. They give her a job at the end. <gasps> and she takes it. <sighs> she takes the sword and she's all happy to have the new fancy sword. No, no Mulan and in she, any other version would have done that. <laughs> offered this job in the imperial army to lead the imperial army and that is literally the exact opposite point mm-hmm. of the original folktale and mm-hmm. it is, and it's something that didn't happen in the 1998 version it's just frustrating it's very frustrating it's very frustrating um, and it, it's very frustrating because I, I i know with some tweaks they could have made this idea of adding chi into yeah. mulan work but because they they didn't um, because basically it seems like only uh, Disney employees and uh, and the Chinese government worked on this movie. You end up with, like, to- it's totally missed. Well, I mean, and that's what we should talk about, is what the fuck is up with the magic. What the fuck is up with the magic? Uh, <laughs> she's just, she's so fucking magical. Uh, so the whole thing, and then the thing that from the very beginning is the director, was very much like, we are not going to have magic in this movie. Yeah. It's a retelling of this story. It is a remake, but it is a completely different story. They want to go back to the ballad. That's Don't at least, that's your, what the marketing yeah, that's said. that's what the marketing, and that's what the director said from the very mm-hmm. beginning. Don't get your hopes up. We're taking out some, ca-. like, they were upfront and honest. It wasn't a surprise that if you showed up to the movie theater, or not the movie theater, because it was during the pandemic, but if you rented it on expensive Disney, um, mm-hmm. then you, <laughs> Disney jail. $30 jail. I call it Disney $30 jail. It's y'all <laughs> $30 jail. Uh, if you rented it you knew that there wasn't going to be a Mushu yeah there you, was no like, Mushu they had released that at the very beginning you knew that there was going to be no songs and no Mushu yeah and we were upset but like they were very upfront and they told us why yes. and so we you know we went in with expectations there was of be no magic yeah so we went in with expectations of like okay this really is a re- this really is going back to the ballad and they're reworking it and then lo and behold <laughs> that not even five minutes into the movie yep Magic. Mm-hmm. Not cheese. It's literally like it's the first. Magic. It's literally like the first sequence with Mulan yeah. like running, running, chasing the chicken, and like flipping around on the roof and stuff. And that she has this magical ability to f- basically fall with grace. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she. Yeah. And wire foo. She has. She has good wire foo. <laughs> such good wire foo. Uh, and it's magic, and that's that's what she has. She yeah. has chi and then she goes on to be described as this thing that only men have yeah uh and that some women possess and the women that can possess this magical belief of be like and how chi is also talked about in the movie is completely wrong yeah after after um, after we finish this explanation i'll do a chi explanation because, yeah, of what chi really like, is no it's, well <clears throat> like it's also this idea of like that's that women are not powerful and it's only the very powerful women who can de- who can deny and and not be the traditional woman can feel and and use chi in magical ways so being yeah. a powerful woman 
makes you powerful in supernatural ways, whereas men na naturally have chi and don't make them powerful at all. They just already know to stand up to those things, and that's why they go out and fight and women right. stay at home. Mm -hmm. Is because they're naturally powerful, whereas only some women are powerful. Yeah. It's real That's stupid. like literally what it is. Okay, so what is chi? What is chi? So I I, I learned what chi was from Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> I, um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but you know here this Dragon Ball Z that's a, a Japanese anime right that has an accurate depiction of chi. So what chi is in um in Chinese culture and Chinese folklore is it's like your life force. It's like this idea of this kind of like spirit life blood that exists within your body. So there is no concept of like men have this type of chi and women have this type of chi or women have less chi than men. Like everything has chi. I have chi. You have chi. Um, everybody here watching, you you guys have chi. Where, where's a cat? There's no cats in here right now, but anyway, my cats plant, have chi. A plant has chi. Yeah, a plant has chi. It's literally like it's like a it's like a life spirit that flows through everyone and everything. So in Dragon Ball Z, if you think about that, the way that chi works is that the, all of the fighters, they're using chi to make themselves be able to fight more powerfully, right? So they can they can punch extra hard. They can do like the, you know, Kamehameha energy blast, right? They can fly. Um, and the way that they're doing this is by developing their chi. So the way that you develop your chi this is very consistent, right? The only time I've ever seen Chi described differently is literally this movie, but this part is very consistent. So the way that you develop your Chi is by hard work and practice. Mm -hmm. It takes time, it takes effort, right? So like you might have a character that has, that has you know, um, powerful Chi when they're young, but if they never develop it, it doesn't matter. The truly powerful chi users are people that have put the practice in. And that's why when they're since they're using chi in Dragon Ball Z, they have whole sections of the the show and of the manga where characters go away to train. Like they 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 leave the main plot and they go to train because the only way to develop your chi is through hard work, time, dedication, practice. That's what having strong chi is. It's about being persistent and practicing. And it's important to also clarify that this isn't a fictional, like we in Western culture have this idea of magic. And for most people who think of magic, think of something as fictional. Yeah. Chi is not fictional. No. Chi is something that is built into the culture that people think and that exists within yeah, the a, religion a lot of people, in yeah. a lot of places, uh, even in yeah. the Christian parts of of China. Yeah. Like there, everybody has chi. It's mm -hmm. not just this idea of, oh, some characters have chi and can do cool things with them. The chi being magnified in that way. Yeah. Is... I mean, obviously Kamehameha is not real. Yeah. But, um, but it's when, important to think that. Yeah. yeah. But when you're, when you're developing your chi, uh, you, you are becoming like more mm -hmm. physically fit and developing your, your abilities and, you know, getting a uh, harder, better, faster, stronger. Yeah, right. And, and that's still real. And it's the idea of like where meditate, a huge reason for meditation, mm -hmm. chakras are, are brought to clear pathways of chi. Yeah. Um, a lot of those like Eastern medicine sort of practices, have to do with unblocking mm -hmm. and and growing your chi. Yeah. Uh, and so this is something that is is practiced religiously mm -hmm. and is of belief for almost every person in China. Yeah, like if you've ever been been to a big city um, or or China, uh, you might have seen like um, older, typically older Chinese men, but it might be younger people and women too, like in the park doing like these very smooth like. Tai Chi? Yeah, these very like smooth Tai Chi movements, right? And it's it's like a concept called effortless action, but that's what they're doing. They're practicing, practicing, practicing so that they make all of those fancy movements look really smooth. And and that's using chi. Like that's what using chi is. It's not having magical powers from birth and and men have chi and women don't have chi. Like it just it, I I've never seen chi explained like this in any property no matter how fantastical or magical. It makes absolutely no so sense. So that's a recipe for disaster that they take something that is very much a part of the prevalent part of the Chinese culture mm -hmm. in their everyday lives mm -hmm. and then warp it for to fit Western audiences ideas of magic and not calling it magic because they didn't want magic. They tried to then sell it as chi, mm -hmm. even though the concept and the actual like idea of what she is was completely lost. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, yeah like, like they'll say, there's a line in the movie that's like, her chi is so strong. But it, that's like a nonsense sentence. If you think about how chi actually works, what they should have said is something like, her skills are so strong or her abilities are so strong or she's, you know, she's worked really hard on her chi or something like that, right? But they're like, her chi is so strong, which doesn't well, make sense. They, they tried to like do the Dragon Ball Z thing. But they didn't but understand they didn't, what they didn't, they didn't understand. Get it. They like, didn't understand what was happening in Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> no, and I think that like that's the whole other thing too is like, okay, quick quick way of solving. Everyone has chi like that. Even if you didn't exclude all the women from chi, like that all all of a sudden like they were like, oh, this is not actual chi. This mm-hmm. is stupid chi. Like uh, Chinese uh, audiences. Mm-hmm. So like if you had just like even accepted what chi was supposed to be, it just. It's a whole thing. Yeah, it's so, a whole thing. What is the fuck is up with this magic? We still don't know when we've watched this movie. Yeah, so I wanna <laughs> I wanna show here. So anybody that's not seen this video, if um if you're into Duncan on the 2020 version of Mulan, you should definitely watch this video. It's from an actual Chinese person explaining a lot of this stuff, and she goes like scene by scene into like what's messed up about this movie. <laughs> so if you want to hear a long ass uh, video then it must be mm, it's, it's really long. it's not even that long it's not that long it's a really it's a really wrong movie it's i want to say it's like 30 40 30 oh, 40 minutes or yeah. something like that um uh, which to me doesn't feel like a long youtube video because i've watched some that are like two hours <laughs> but um maybe it is long depending but but yeah so she goes kind of point by point and um and basically explains like why exactly this makes no sense in like a scene by scene type yeah. of way so if you want some more information on like um, how how she works and why it's so wrong in this movie. I recommend giving that video a watch because several of her points are about how like stupid she is portrayed in this movie. It's so it's so, so stupid. stupid. It's so stupid. It's so stupid. All right. Yeah. So um, and because of this change, it then changed the point of the movie. Uh, instead of being about once again, but. Mm, Filial piety. Filial. I don't know why I can't say filial. <laughs> piety. Filial piety. Uh, it becomes about girl power. It yeah. becomes about that this Mulan is a is a uniquely strong woman mm-hmm. and therefore can use can use magic. Yeah, and it makes and it doesn't even make sense. Like it's it's a girl power movie, but it's like it's girl power, but she was born with it. So it's not it's now not an inspirational yeah. movie. It's like they took everything out of like the feminine that made Mulan a feminist icon mm-hmm. and then was like how can we make her a feminist icon again oh we need to make this movie about girl power how can we do that well women don't have chi then like yeah. like I think that that was probably the thinking it feels like it it feels like <laughs> that was the kind of um, background of it so so essentially then because then basically adding in chi just creates this cascade of problems like chi is why Mulan's character is internally inconsistent and awful yep chi is why they added in the the witch right because they they have to have some kind of chi foil for Mulan because if women aren't supposed to have chi well they got to show at least a second one with chi so that they can you know compare and contrast of course they do right she is yeah she is not fictional in in chinese culture therefore there is no such thing as magic in this yeah they can take out mushu and not be make breaking their rule yep she also break is what breaks the father's character right like the part of the reason that um the father and mulan's relationship is not super close in this is because there's a conflict from the time that she's born about having to hide her chi so her father is not 100 supportive of her um, to the point that he even gets really frustrated and yells at her in one scene, right? But even if they cut the yelling scene, it's still not the same because he's not like 100% supportive of her the way that he is in the animated version. Yep. So so the, and the, so the addition of Chi basically breaks the whole movie because then you have to, because you add it in and then you have to solve this problem. Oh, and that creates this problem that we have to solve. Oh, and that creates this problem that we have to solve. And by the time you're done, you have a movie that is completely internally inconsistent, makes no sense to a Chinese audience or a Western audience. And there's just no hope for for this movie. I mean, if you're one of the few people that did like it, I'm so sorry. We're sitting here shitting on your movie. But no one it's, really, it. it's really bad. It's really bad. It. And what it does is it makes me really, really sad that there is a certain generation that this is their Mulan movie. Mm-hmm. And because it's like, no, the original is so good. Yeah. Like, there's so many points in the original where you're watching it and you just feel like you feel something yeah you feel something so deep inside like you you feel how close Milan and her father is you feel how dire the circumstances are when the battalion reaches that you village f- that was raised Yeah, you feel the stakes of the change yeah. of all of these characters 
there isn't a clear like I think that's the other thing too is that there isn't a clear arc in Mulan. No, like there isn't. She she's the same at the beginning as she is at the end. Yeah, and I she's mean, like a, a wild child with she. Like, well, she's no longer hiding herself, and it's like okay. But she wasn't before. But she wasn't really before. Yeah. So like, she went from, like, not hiding just herself to having to hide herself to deciding she doesn't want to hide herself. Yeah. And that's really stupid. It's really stupid. It's, it's really, really stupid. stupid. And, like, it's just, it just, it drives me bonkers because the original is so good. And, like, not that all of the Disney remakes are good. A lot of them are are not nearly as good as the original. But this one, like, the difference between the original and, and this is, like, so far apart that it's just like it's angering like it's it's not even just like disappointing or, or saddening or like oh this movie was okay like you you watch it and the only feeling i feel is anger because i wish i was watching the 1998 version yes. <laughs> oh my god so much i was like why oh one I'm other one other part i want to mention so the the what we said before about the expert tone shift at the end of girl oh, worth yeah. fighting for oh my god you because so, so that happens in this movie, right? Like they have a they have a training montage. It's literally the worst training montage I've ever watched. It's so fucking boring. <laughs> because there's no song. There's no make a man out of you, right? And then they have the couple of scenes in between where they where they you know they have the bath scene and they, and they find out where the, where the where the Huns are Rorans in this one, um, where they are and they have to go they have to go you know catch up to them, right? So like all that happens, right? But there is no girl worth fighting for, which means that when they get to the village, like. It's just, I don't, I mean, you see death and destruction, but I mean, you don't feel anything. No. You don't, there's nothing. Because there's no, there's no tonal shift. There's no dropout. Well, there's also, like, there's this, this, this friendship that develops also doesn't feel like friendship. Mm-hmm. Um, and it also, yeah, it, it doesn't feel, there's no stakes yeah. anywhere in this movie. You there don't get no the sense, stakes. you don't get the sense that Mulan has bonded with, with these, these soldier friends that yep. she has. Um, cause they're, they don't have, cause there's no song or anything The the playful banter is very flat. Like it exists in this movie, but it's so flat. You don't feel it. Whereas in the animated one, you feel like these, these, all of these boys all bonded, you know? Um, but in, in this version, it's just like, you it don't does. feel it. You just it's, don't feel it. It's flat. That's yeah. Flat. It's so flat. All right. So. So, um, why Disney keeps remaking its own Films. It's living. It's living out. It's it's uh, midlife crisis. That's what's happening right now. Disney what? is like we don't fucking know what to do. And I want to separate Disney here from Pixar because Pixar is doing great things. Mm-hmm. Uh, Soul is not. <laughs> they ran out of ideas. Yes. <laughs> They're okay. like, you know what? We were hot and popular back in the 90s. What were we doing back then? Let's do the exact same thing except with live version. So I don't think it's they ran out of ideas. If Disney wanted more ideas, there is a wealth of stories that they have not tapped into. Oh, yeah. Right? Because Disney Disney is the house of, of remakes and yeah. and uh, and retellings and, and sequels and things like that, right? They never make anything original. Everything they make is based off of, of a book or a folk tale or, or some historical account or something, right? So you would think if anybody's going going to you know remake all their own stuff again disney would be the place to do it but that's just not true because they're going back and they're remaking their own stuff but um but they're remaking it with dollar signs in their eyes they do not care about making good movies they care about making movies that sell because there is no competition for them anymore because they bought everybody well that and also like companies in some strange ways are like addicts Mm-hmm. In the fact that the the more high you go, the higher you are going to chase. And nothing will ever and has ever competed with Disney's high on Frozen. That's true. Uh, Frozen, They're chasing Frozen still. Frozen took over the fucking world mm-hmm. in a way that... I don't think anyone thought was possible. No, I like, still it still baffles me. So, hi, my name is Karen, and I hate Frozen. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. It's not good. It's not great. <laughs> um, but like, but like, even but it's very popular, and I and, and I see why so many people not love even it. Just popular in Western cultures. It's everywhere. It's in Eastern cultures, in yeah. Southeastern cultures. It's everywhere. In, in in Europe, there are so which is our Western cultures. But cannot anyway. be friends. Sorry, <laughs> Lunar. Uh, friendship over. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> irony however can stay um, no. I love you guys it's okay if you love Frozen most people love Frozen it's I, fine I, it's whatever I, it would be better if they made Elsa a lesbian anyway um, <laughs> you just there is there will never be something like Frozen again 
And Disney is trying. Mm-hmm. And so, like, that, the fact that Disney... Because Disney did not expect Frozen to do what Frozen did. No, but this is the like, thing. But the thing is, Frozen was made from a, a point of view of, I have this story I want to tell. I have this point I want to make. I want to make art about this topic. And it set out to do that. And it resonated with people because of that. Yep. Yeah, but they did not They did not think that. They didn't hear that. They just sat there and was like, we're going to do whatever we're going to do. Yeah, they, they didn't make Frozen with the idea of like, let's cobble together. Um, let's let's get the people from Avenue Q because everyone liked Avenue Q at the time. And let's do let's do a fairy tale where the characters aren't the roles you expect them to be because that's what people will like right now. Like, it wasn't like that. It was literally it was like... It literally like, we want to tell the story. Yeah, like we want to tell... We, we, we want to make an adaptation of, of Snow queen that's really more about the queen and the struggles that she goes through and they and they went in with this idea and um and and it you can tell it like it's it, even though i don't like it right it is art and it they do make the points they wanted to make and it's it's real you know and we're gonna dive into this even more next week but like talking about like also, there was some success with remakes. They did successfully remake Cinderella. And they have over the years. Like, Disney, not necessarily yeah. as the animated. But, like, if we think of uh, Hammerstein's Cinderella with Brandy. Oh, yeah. I mean, Cinderella's of, been remade over and I mean, over. Cinderella, if we think of Cinderella story, if we think mm-hmm. about, like, cin- remaking Cinderella is not new. They did remake Cinderella. It was successful. Yeah. They remade... Um, they made Maleficent, which is a remaking of Sleeping, Sleeping Beauty. Beauty. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and it's really those good. those <laughs> were making money because they were telling different stories. Yeah. But they were making money. Mm-hmm. Um, Cinderella wasn't telling different stories, but it, it was just better. Uh, so well, it brought it, it brought a... Anyway. It, it brought we'll, we'll a talk lot of things. Yeah. yeah. It, it fixed a lot it of It brought things. new stuff to the table. Yeah. And then they saw how much money they could make. Mm-hmm. They saw a entire collection of movies that an entire generation had never seen yeah and they went huh what if we do the same thing yeah they were like you know who's having kids right now millennials are having kids let's let's make some let's make some movies that the millennials will want to bring their kids to and those millennials love things kids love thing kids love disney because of frozen we are going to try to find the perfect formula to make more money uh, and it stopped being about the art. It stopped being about the movies. It stopped being about everything. And every single movie that they have released since then has really gone downhill. And we're going Pretty to much. rank and talk about every single one next week. Yes. So so <laughs> next week, um, as kind of a, a follow-up to this Mulan versus Mulan conversation, we're going to give like basically quick fire hot takes yeah. on every single one of the Disney live action remakes. And we're going to rank them. So, so I mean, me and Landon might have some disagreements on some, so we might have to kind of split that. But basically, that's what we're going to make. We'll debate. Yeah, we'll debate about it. Um, and you guys in the comments can add yes. to this debate, too. Yeah, please we'll tell us. we'll take that into consideration during our ranking. But yeah, at yeah. the end of the time, we should have a ranking of every live action mm-hmm. ranked. Every Disney uh, remake. best to worst. Yes, and it's all the remakes. So because, you know, Disney's remade their stuff a bunch of times, it's, this, this is all the remakes um, that are that are like the recent ones, like pretty yeah. much like from from around the time of like uh, Alice in Wonderland forward to now. Yes. So it's not like all the remakes for for forever. It's just the past couple decades of yeah. remakes. And it's and it's specifically those that have had animated movies. Yes, yes. So if there's an animated version and then they remade it into a live action version. And then if you like that, maybe we can do the animated ranking the animated movies. Oh my god, there's so many animated movies. It could be fun. (laughs) Well, so when we get to those hot takes, um, y'all please let us know what you would be interested in us doing future episodes on that are more like this Mulan episode. So I know somebody mentioned the Beauty and the Beast. Beast. Yeah. Um. So we could definitely add that to the list. But if y'all hear some hot takes you like in this kind of like short rapid fire version, let us know so that and we'll make episodes that are like expanding on that particular movie Absolutely. yeah um yeah so that's that is this week we are actually wrapping up pretty pretty net much now yeah but let's ask the question that we ask at the end of every single one of these video essays and that's did the movie resonate to you so i have to say the animated version of mulan is one of those movies that i loved as a kid and i still love now it slaps <laughs> and it doesn't always happen that way, right? Like sometimes things you love as a kid do not age very well. No. So I have to I have to have a confession to make. Oh. I love Disney's Pocahontas. Sorry. Um, I loved it as a kid. I saw it as a very, at a very formative age. Um, it, it struck certain nerves with me. Uh, it's it's not lovely upon rewatch. It's just racist. It's really racist. Um, but that's not true for Mulan for me. I loved it as a kid. 
I love it now. I think it is not only um, a movie that resonates with me, it is like an objectively good movie, which I really hesitate to say that about most movies. Um, because I mean, even if I don't enjoy a movie, I can find things I like about a movie. That's just kind of because I've just watched so many. It's just kind of how I am, right? But the animated Mulan resonated with me in 98 when it came out. And, and I was a little girl that maybe, um, you know, wasn't as girly as, as I thought I should be or was only girly in very specific ways. Um, it's being a girl. Yeah. Mm hmm. And uh, and it still resonates with me now and, and more more what resonates with me now is uh, Mulan's relationship with her father, you know, um, and just how well crafted the movie is and how good the songs are. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it absolutely resonates with me. Um, 2020 version? 2020 version? No. <laughs> <laughs> There, this movie, the 2020 version, I feel, I feel basically nothing. Like the only emotion I had watching that movie is, damn, I wish we weren't doing an episode on this so I could turn this off and turn on the 1998 version. <laughs> That's the emotion I felt. I felt the same way. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I hadn't watched this movie. So that, that YouTube video that I linked to you guys earlier in the stream, like when the movie first came out, that video dropped and I watched that video mm -hmm. from, from that lady. And I was like, oh, fabulous. I don't have to watch this movie. I have a Chinese person, you know, telling me that all my fears about what this movie is are true. And I don't want to see it. And I don't want to ruin Mulan for me. So I just watched that. And so it was really only a couple of weeks ago that I watched this movie finally. And uh, yeah, everything she says is right um, in that video and more. Um, there's just, it's just not good, y'all. It's not internally consistent. It doesn't speak, it doesn't speak to the same points that the original Ballad of Mulan makes. It doesn't speak to the points that the Disney 1998 animated version makes. It just, it does nothing. It just, it spent a lot of money to make like just a cash grab. Yeah. That's all it is. No, it just is a cash grab and it's... It, so so let me ask right. you so it does so we'll start with the 2020 version for you and then okay, we'll go back to cool, 1998 cool, so cool. how does how does the 2021 feel with you i like the witch hate all men um no, i'm just kidding <laughs> the witch doesn't hate all men uh but yeah no i think um the 2020 version doesn't resonate it's it's soulless like mm -hmm. the movie it feels like a cash grab yeah it feels like it's intention and it doesn't feel passionate it doesn't feel like anyone was excited about it. It didn't feel like anyone did any research. I didn't gain anything from it. And it's hard to be objective because you watch it and you don't watch. Like, we are not watching it through the lens of not having watched the original. We watched the original. We fell in love with the original. The remakes are not going to live up to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They, in they the could, form, but not like and this. And they have in some of them. And we'll talk about that next week. But in this particular formula, not in the way that Mulan did it. Yeah. Uh, the cast was diverse, but the crew and, and production company wasn't. You could tell. Yeah. And, it, and it felt empty. Um, so does it resonate? It resonates in all the... It, it resonates by saying that this is, this is putting another nail on the coffin uh, to telling me that I don't like remakes. Mm -hmm. Like I did for a little while there, and then they've just become more and more disappointing. Yeah. And so this is just another example of that. Uh, and I'm sure Little Mermaid, which was one of my favorite Disney movies growing up, um, will be the final nail in that coffin. I'm so nervous for that. I feel like they're going to do, I feel like they're going to do the, the thing where they try to like fix the movie, but they fix it in all the wrong ways. Yep. I'm like really scared that's what, that's what's going to happen, that they're going to, they're going to take the criticism of like Ariel's not feminist enough and they're going to try to like fix her. I'm yep. really scared about that. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm real scared. And, and, uh, for me, yeah, Disney is, I mean, Little Mermaid is my big one. So the fact that they did Mulan dirty like this and, and I, and Mulan and going into the 1998 version, Mulan 1998 is about as close to a perfect movie as there could be. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, There's like nothing I'd change about that movie. There was nothing I would change about that movie. Um, other than maybe having it, I would love to see what, if that movie without any strings attached was able to be produced in this day and age, mm -hmm. I would love to see what would have happened. Yeah. It probably wouldn't have slapped as hard as it did, uh, but it's awesome. It's great. I recommend it to all the people who, who don't watch Disney in my life to watch it because it's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've made small, small children watch it many a time and <laughs> every single one of them has loved it still. So does it resonate? Absolutely. I yeah. think it not only resonates with me and how much I love this movie, but it also resonates with generations after us it aged quite well it aged really well and it and it keeps the attention 
of an entirely different generation, which yeah. is incredibly rare, especially in Disney movies. Yeah, yeah. Because a lot of people, a lot of movies don't. Well, in Disney movies are, are often a product of their time and they don't always age super well. You yep. know, if you don't, if you don't catch watching them at the right age, sometimes like they just don't really translate properly. Yep. Um, but, uh, but that's not true for Mulan. It's amazing for any age and for future generations so far anyway. It's yeah. So for me, the 1998 movie resonates. The 2021 can no. go jump off a cliff. I wish it was never made. Too. Yeah, because oh. it just kind of it just kind of tarnishes the original Mulan. It really does. Yeah, yeah. The nothing about the 2020 remake makes me curious about China or want to know more or get into Chinese folk tales, um, or and anything like do, that. It doesn't do it does it dirty because yeah. also it makes it way more it makes China look way more sexist than they are in these old folklore stories. Yeah. Like, yeah. Not that there's, there's obviously there's sexism in China. I mean, they have patriarchy, patriarchy too. They have but, patriarchy there too, just like we have here. Right. But, um, but the way it's portrayed is it's like, like, it's wow, even more if, worse if than you reality. Think that that's your, if you think that is the concept of chi <laughs> mm-hmm. and that is the actual concept of chi that Chinese folklore has, that gives you a whole wrong, like, yeah. wow. Okay. So no. Yeah. 1998 no. for the win. We don't speak of the other one. Ever yeah. Again. <clears throat> and I'll never watch it again. No. <laughs> All right. Let's All right. So where can you find us. us? Okay. So as we talked about next week on um, Interstage Window, we're going to be ranking every Disney live action remake, and we're going to have some um, some quick hot takes with about each of them. So this is all of the more recent remakes um, that had previous animated versions. This is going to be a time. It's going to be. It's going to be real so fun. fun. Watch Karen and I's friendship end uh, as we argue over where Lady of the Tramp should be. Oh my god. <laughs> Have you watched it? Not yet. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we won't get into it. I'm yet, saving my hot know, take. I'm saving my hot take for next. So I figured I'd say that. We're, I'm saving my hot take um. for next week. <laughs> Um, all right. So also, uh, I stream on Thursdays. Uh, we're playing through Final Fantasy X. So um, if you if you like my channel, then please join me on uh, Thursdays. My stream time then is six thirty to eight thirty Eastern. Um, we're gonna be going to Remnant Temple. And then, of course, um, you know, there's my YouTube. On my YouTube channel, I post all of my VODs. Uh, I also have a, uh, a show that I post there called Spare Room, which is um, for role play help. Um, it's, it doesn't, I don't post it as often anymore because it has like almost 150 episodes or something crazy like that. Um, but that's on there as well. Thumper, hey, it's welcome. <laughs> so that's where you can find me here. I'll put my socials in the chat. There we go. So there's all the links and stuff where you can find me. And um, where can everybody find you, Landon? Uh, you can find me at my Amazon shopping list. Uh, no, <laughs> you can find me um, on Twitter and let's do Instagram and well, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at <laughs> Land in Maine. Yep. Um, I'm not really posting on social media at the moment. Like Twitter, actually, I am. So if you want to follow that, you can. Uh, but right now, I'm taking a, a small break. You can also find me at Karen's house. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, <laughs> I love you. Jane, I also love you. This is just going to be a love fest. Uh, you yes, also- so if y'all, if y'all want to support Landon, the best way to do it right now is to check out her Amazon Please, wish list. I am finishing up my office and there are some great things. And also, I'm really... Like, I'm feeling really insecure about my setup size after seeing Karen's setup. <laughs> she saw the behind-the-scenes now. Real, she can see this side that y'all can't real see. It's intense. <laughs> and now I'm like, wow, I should I should be better. <laughs> so if you'd like to can help me contribute, that would be great. Yes. Um, but, of course, no pressure. Thank you, Katie. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, also, you can find me here for the next four hours because we're about to have a party. Woo! All right, guys. So um, the way that this is going to work is I am going to end this stream, but that's literally just so that we can have a discreet video for the VOD because that's what's going to go up on YouTube probably tomorrow because we're going to be streaming until like six yep. o'clock today. Um, so so we're going to do that and then I'm going to come right back, but we're going to take a quick break at first to kind of clean up, get water, things like that. And then we are going to play some Jackbox. So you'll be thinking about which Jackbox you want to play. Um, I have three and four, I believe. So think so the game's in that. So chat, y'all think about that. Um, so let me end the stream and we'll be right back. Okay, guys. Give us one moment. Don't forget to be awesome. Woo! Don't forget to make it a great day. Bye!